Okay, so <coughs> continuing from last class, uh, so basically we were uh, trying to figure out the expansion fan in a uh, shock tube, right? And um, we saw we kind of began studying the method of characteristics so that we can study uh, the change in properties, okay, uh, uh, behind and in front of the expansion wave as well as the uh, the property changes within the expansion fan. So, uh, we uh, stopped kind of uh, to the last lecture, where we um, were just at the point where we were about to find out relationships for the property changes within the expansion fan and behind and in front of it. So, let us go ahead and continue from there and see where we go. Okay? So, uh, just to remind you, this is what we had, right? So, we had this was our shock tube. Right, just drawing this half of it. So then, this was uh, region four, and this was region three, and <coughs> we had a you, we had an expansion fan, right, moving into this quiescent uh, flow, uh, quiescent region. Right, we had that, and uh, all the, this, all these uh, waves basically were originating at a single point. So we found out that if I were to draw an xt curve, right? If I were to draw an xt curve, so if I were to draw an x t curve like that, okay? then I could uh, actually represent these waves on this x t curve. This being the head of it, which is this, right? and the other being the tail of it, which is this. Okay, and essentially these are okay. So the so this was our uh, uh, these were characteristic lines. Okay, these are lines in which the governing equations are uh, are have their solutions. The solutions to the governing equations lie along these lines, and hence characteristic equations. Okay. Now, um, we also talked about and we said that the slope of this, okay, slope of this was basically uh, u minus a, right? Yeah, okay, sorry. So, u by a and this was, so therefore this, the head as you can see is moving into region 4 and this is region 3, okay? This is region 3 and so therefore the slope of this becomes that and uh, this becomes slope of that okay that becomes okay now in this region is zero isn't it because this is quiescent so therefore it is, this is uh, minus 1 by a4 so this is where we had uh, stopped. Okay, so this is essentially the as you can see the wave is basically centered. This is a t is equal to zero. Okay, centered, and uh, we also showed that these. Okay, so these are the c minus characteristics. Okay, and uh, we also drew. Uh, see these. Are, these could be possible c plus characteristics. Okay. And uh, essentially, what we see over here is uh, we also talked about whether these characteristic lines uh, would be a straight lines or it could be curved, right? Now, in in a general case, they don't have to be uh, straight lines. Okay, for this particular case, we proved that yes, these are straight lines. So hence, we uh, said that in a in a shock tube, essentially, what we have is a centered simple wave. Okay centered simple wave simple because it's a straight line and centered because it's centered 
Okay. And we also found out that um, we also said that on uh, C minus, okay, the uh, C minus corresponds to J minus, okay, these were the Riemann invariants, okay, and on C plus corresponds to J plus. Okay. So, we re and we then uh, showed that along the C plus for such a such a case, the J plus is um, well, you know, J plus is constant on any C plus characteristic, but then uh, we took two um, uh, C plus uh, characteristics and we showed that essentially within the expansion fan, essentially within the expansion fan, j plus is a constant, right. So, therefore, let us start from there. So, say what we are basically saying is that Right. So, within the expansion fan, j plus is constant. So, uh, which means that I can take any point out here for any C, uh, any uh, positive characteristic and I will have the same j plus. And so, let us uh, do a thing, let us apply this uh, for a point within the expansion fan and a point in say region 4. So, now j plus is essentially, right, so j plus within the ex expansion fan. So, is equal to u plus 2 a by gamma minus 1, right. Now, this is a uh, constant and the j plus if I apply this, if this I apply to region 4, then uh, what I get is that this is say uh, within the fan, right. Okay. And um, J plus is U4 plus 2 A4 by gamma minus 1. Okay. This is this is uh, in region 4. Okay. In, in region 4. Okay, so therefore, basically, if I if I what I'm saying is, let us say consider a region A here. I say a, a, let us consider a point say P. Let us consider a point say Q. So say Q. So it says J plus Q and J plus P. Right now, they both lie on the same characteristic. Okay, so therefore, from here, what I can find out is that um, so. If they lie on the same characteristics, so j plus is going to be constant. So, therefore, I can say right. So, now from this, what we can get is if I if I sort of work with this, what I get is this. Uh, from this expression, what I will get is this. Okay, so we get this sort of an expression. Okay, let's say call this as one. Okay, now um, uh, basically what we're trying to do here is find out properties, right? Find out the relationship properties within the expansion fan. Now what we know is that. Right, and what the relationship that we have is a by a four, right? So therefore, I can uh, now the therefore write. So from this, basically, what I can write is t by t four. Okay, so you could sort of do that yourself. Okay, so this is t by t four is one minus gamma minus one by two.
<coughs> okay, so what is interesting here is that this is the uh, any local velocity within the fan. Isn't it? This is a local velocity within the fan, and this is the speed of sound into the of in the region into which the fan is advancing. Okay, and this is where the flow is uh, stagnant or quiescent. Okay, so similarly, now since this is an isentropic, uh, you know, it's an it's an isentropic process. So again, we will have this. Okay. Okay, so now you can see from here. So therefore, we can write uh, p by p four. Okay, so therefore p by p four, we will get these two relationships here now. So p by p four therefore becomes. I'm just rewriting that. This is for completion. Okay. Okay. So, this is the relationship of the pressure. Okay, this is the relationship of the pressure, and let us also write uh, the uh, gamma. So, and sorry, rho. So, rho by rho, those are densities, is essentially equal to this uh, t by t4 to the power 1 by gamma minus 1. Okay, so which is Um, I thought this should be 2 by gamma minus 1, uh, okay, to the power of gamma, okay, and uh, the rho by rho 4 should be equal to t, uh, 1 by gamma minus 1, okay. Okay, this should be, I think this should be this, okay. I should be, I think this should be this. Okay. So, I will have to cross check that if I am getting that wrong or not. So, I will just cross check that. You can, you can check it also. This should be given in any standard book. So, just check this. I think this should be 2 by gamma minus 1, but uh, I see in my notes I have written 1 by gamma minus 1. So, you just have to cross check that. Okay. So, essentially what we have done now. Okay, so, therefore, uh, what we have done now is uh, got an expression for the properties within the um, expansion fan, right. So, we have a prop, this is the, look, the temperature within the expansion fan, this is the uh, pressure within the expansion fan, this is the uh, density within the expansion fan, and these all are, uh, you know, uh, with respect to the uh, the temperature, pressure, and the density in the quiescent region. Okay, so having done that now, now let us see. Now this is a velocity u which is within the um, expansion fan. Okay, now let us see. Now uh, we know that within a c, say c minus characteristic, so we have a c minus characteristic here, where j minus is constant and the uh, slope obviously, the is the d x d t, is not it? So, u minus a, is not it? So, d x on a c minus characteristic, okay. now d x d t is u minus uh, a, which means that essentially, right, if I do this, now let us look at um, this here, this equation here, and therefore, from here I am going to write uh, x, 
using equation 1, okay. So, uh, where I can basically get rid of this A. So, if I do that, what I get is this. Okay. Now, what is interesting to, this is an interesting result. Okay. So, what we see, what we see is that the local velocity is given in terms of the speed of sound in the, in the region in which, into which it is moving, which is the quiescent region and uh, x by uh, t. Now, what you can see from here and also you should sort of uh, cross check yourself that All right. Okay. So essentially, what you're saying is that the um, uh, the x by t here, right? So that is u three minus a three, which is here, right? And it is minus a four, which is in this region. So all you're saying is that. Uh, the uh, you know basically the inverse of slope okay which is here inverse of slope is essentially the u3 minus a3 in the region 3 and here it is u4 minus a4 but this is squeezed so it becomes minus a4 so this is a limit okay this is a limit um, uh, of the x by t. So, what this is essentially giving us uh, an idea is the, uh, the uh, range of the expansion fan in the sense that within a given time more or less what would be the uh, distance to which this disturbance will travel. Okay? So, this is what we get from here. Now, um, okay, so before we uh, you know, sort of plot this okay before we look at this and see how they look now let us go and find out how we're going to um, calculate the relations in this region and this region because in the, especially in this region because now we have done the other part of it okay where we had the contact surface moving okay now let us draw that so we had this was the shock part of it so we had this was the contact surface. Now, this was we said moving with u p, right? And we had a shock wave, and that was moving yet into another quiescent region. So, this was region 2, and we said this was moving with, yeah, so this is equal to u 2 actually, isn't it? And this was moving with, say, a velocity w into a quiescent. Uh, region. Okay. So, now the thing is we have uh, adequately calculated relations in uh, region 2 and 1. So, we kind of know relations in region 4 and we are still left to find out uh, relations in region 3 and uh, we have now found out expressions for the properties within the um, expansion fan. Okay. So, to do that now uh, here u 3, now once this, uh, once the diaphragm is broken, this is the original location of the diaphragm, is, you know it sends out a shock wave which induces motion in the fluid behind it. Okay. So, in this case therefore, now this is a contact surface. Now, as we said it is like a slip surface, so therefore the pressure across it is the same. So, we have said that P 3 is equal to P 2. So, it would mean that u 3 is also equal to um, u 2, right. So, having uh, said that, so, so essentially what we get from here is that u 3 is equal to u 2 is equal to u p. Okay? So, if I uh, do that, okay, so let us say some now and as we have said that it does not need to be the same fluid, it could be two different gases, right. So, let us say we are going to say uh, call the gas in re or the region 1 and 4 say corresponding gamma is gamma 1, 
and gamma 4. So, let us just say for a generic case that the you know um, the ratio of um, specific heats is 1 and 2. So, we have two different sort of gases. Okay, now, this is something um, now u p. So, therefore, so this is uh, ok. Now, this is what we did earlier ok with the shock wave. This is what we did earlier with the shock wave and we you can see that this is dependent on the pressure ratios in the regions 1 and 2 right. Okay. So, we had a we had a value we had an expression for the velocity which is u 2 u p right in terms of the pressure ratios in the regions 1 and 2 ok. And in uh, this case we are basically considering the gas in region 1. So, therefore, this is what we have this is what we have from the shock analysis which we have done before ok. Now, what we will do is we will uh, use this equation the pressure equation here ok. Now, you can see that this is a pressure uh, equation here and we will apply it to um, you know anywhere between the head and tail of the um, expansion wave. Okay. So, this is the pressure anywhere in uh, within the region uh, anywhere within the expansion fan. Okay. So, if I look at this fan and, uh, and I apply this between the head and the tail of it. So, head is this region which is P 4 and tail is essentially this region. So, which is P 4 sorry P 3. Okay, this region. So, what I am going to do is apply this equation 3. Okay. So, equation 3 between head and tail of the fan. Right. If I do that, so essentially what will I get? So what I get is this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So let us uh, write the gammas out. So we will write it this way. Okay. Gamma four. Gamma four. Gamma four. Okay. So we uh, get this. Okay. Now what we will do is we will solve for u three from here. Okay. We solve for u three. from above ok. If we do that what we get is this ok. So, 1 Okay. So, I just solve for u 3 from this expression and I get this right, but of course, we know that p 3 is equal to p 2 right, because this was the contact uh, surface we said that there. So, therefore, now here p 3 is of course, equal to uh, p 2 as well. So, essentially this becomes the uh, uh, relationship. So, u 3 is to um, you know u 3 we get in term the velocity in in uh, region 3 we've now got in terms of velocity of sound in the in region 4 speed uh, the pressure in region 2 and region 4 okay so we've got u3 here okay let us look at this now so essentially this is my u3 okay and we have u 2 from here. And we have u 2 from here. So, all we will do is now 
equate u 2 and u 3, because these are the same. Okay. If I do that, then what I get is this. So, say coming back to this here. Okay. Now, if I do that, if I equate that, okay, this is slightly longish kind of thing, so I will just uh, sort of write it out. Be a little patient. So, so P four by P one. Okay. Okay. A one by A 4. Okay. Okay, and all of that is raised to okay. So if I all I've done here is essentially equated u two and u three, and this is what I get. Okay, so you can see that this relationship when I equate these velocities, this relationship is um, is all in, in given in terms of the pressure ratios. So, now P 2 by P 1 is the incident shock strength, is not it? So, for, for a, a shock tube, unlike in the shocks which we have done before, in such a case the strength of the shock is driven by the pressure ratios across the uh, across it. So, which is what we see over here, right. So, so, P 2 by P 1, P 2 by P 1 is basically the incident shock strength, right. Right. And what is P 4 P 1? This is essentially the P 4 by P 1 is essentially the pressure ratio across the, in, across the diaphragm. Okay. So, this is uh, say diaphragm pressure. pressure ratio. Okay. Okay. Now, the point here is if you look at say, if you look at this particular expression over here. So, now for a given diaphragm pressure, for a given diaphragm pressure okay, and for given specific heat, uh, ratio of specific heats of you know two different gases in the two, uh, in the, in, in the two sections, which is 4 and 1 you can actually calculate the strength of the incident shock wave okay directly from this expression directly from this expression okay so therefore let us sort of look at uh, you know i'll just illustrate uh, point by point as to uh, sort of what how how will we go about this okay now uh, so in all, so now we are in a position where we can essentially solve for properties in the entire shock tube. Okay. Let us see that. Now that we have found, uh, we, have, we have an expression say uh, like this, okay. what is the first thing uh, we do? Okay. So, I will, okay, I will leave these expressions over here. Okay. So, let us say, hmm, okay. so let us say over here. Okay. So, first things first of course. Okay. So, first things first is that um, for a given diaphragm pressure, okay, for a given diaphragm pressure, so let us call this equation something, okay. mm, say 4, let us call this 5. Okay. So, for given 
diaphragm pr pressure ratio which is P4 by P1. So, you evaluate or calculate incident shock strength right you can see from here directly so for a given uh, uh, pressure ratio or diaphragm pressure ratio you can calculate the incident shock strength p2 by p1 using 5 okay this particular equation and then as we have already done for uh, shock waves once you get if for uh, an unsteady shock structure like this for an unsteady structure uh, structure like this the properties basically uh, depend on the a pressure ratio unlike the steady cases which we've done before where they uh, they 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 uh, were dominated by the incident mach number so therefore once we have calculated the shock strength we can totally calculate the properties across it right so uh, yes so using the shock so for the corresponding to So, P 2 by P 1 we calculate all shock properties. Okay, so, we can calculate all the shock properties. Okay. Now, once I uh, do that, now what I need is essentially um, P 3 by P 4. Okay. So, P uh, 3 by P 4 or the strength of the expansion fan. So, uh, I mean that see that is easy to do. So, so essentially P4, so I will just write that as um, you can see P3 by P1, P1 by P4, but then this is P2, so which is P2 by P1, so, to, so th now P3 by P4, if you see this is the region. So, P 3 by P 4 is given uh, by this. Okay. Now, P 2 by P 1 is known at this point of time and this was given. So, then this is your uh, expansion shock strength, sorry, sorry expansion fan, expansion fan strength. right? So, this is your uh, fan strength. Okay. So, now what we will calculate is um, uh, the uh, properties right now within the expansion fan now that we know uh, p3 by uh, p4 right if we know p3 by p4 so let us go back to these relations over here so if you look at this uh, now p by p4 here okay now once uh, what we can do now is essentially use isentropy okay use the isentropic a relationship okay which is uh, okay it's here okay i have it written over here so in if when i have this relationship over here okay so but at this point of time what i have found out is p3 by p4 okay so i need so let us now uh, calculate the properties in uh, in region 3 and region uh, 4 okay in region 3 and region 4 so, we are not talking about the inside the fan, we are just talking in these in, in the region behind and front of the uh, expansion fan. Okay. So, now this is the um, this is the isentropic relationship. So, now if I apply this okay. now here P 3 by P 4 is what I have just calculated. So, P 3 by P 4 is uh, known and therefore, you can calculate the density and uh, temperature ratios. Okay. So, that can be done and after that what we need is properties. So, what we need is properties uh, within the fan. So, within the fan we use equations say 3, 4 and and, and what also oh, 2, 3 and 4. So, within the fan then we shall use these uh, equations. So, this is for within the fan, my temperature is this, temperature ratios is this 3 and 4. So, with, the, with using those equations, I can calculate for the properties within the fan.
Okay. So, that pretty much gives us um, a solution for the shock tube. Okay. So, um, now let us just sort of uh, go back to the picture that I had drawn right at the beginning, you know, which uh, you did not have any way of sort of deciding whether it was correct or to agree with it or not agree with it. So, let us sort of revisit that one more time. Okay. So, essentially what I am going to try and do is, you know, plot the pressure temperatures and densities okay, and, um, and velocity and see if, if what I had drawn right at the beginning is something that you agree with. Okay. Mm, so, say okay, this is a little uh, asymmetric, but that is okay. Let us draw it over here. Okay, so, so that essentially this is my uh, shock tube. Okay, so essentially this is my uh, shock tube. This is my uh, shock tube, isn't it? Okay, so now. Uh, let us just uh, draw this. So, let us say, okay, and I am going to concentrate just this is something that we have done uh, before, right. Let us just concentrate on this region till here, okay. So, this is in region 3 and region 4, which is what which is what we have been studying in the past one or two lectures, right. So, this is basically the regions concentrating in front and behind of the uh, expansion fan. Okay. So, if I uh, do this, so let us mark this out. So, this is the head and this is the tail. Okay. Now, if I do that, okay, let us take a different color. So, if this is it, so let us say this is, let us call the velocity. Okay. Now, you can see that the velocity uh, here is 0, is not it? It is u 4 is 0. So, therefore, this is 0. Okay. This is 0. And then in u 3, okay, so u 3 is some velocity, which is, uh, you know, given by the expression. So, it is some velocity, it is a, some positive velocity. Okay. So, this is essentially u 3 and at this point it is equal to u 2 over here. So, we are not going beyond that. So, this is u 2 essentially. So, u 3. Now, what is left to do is what is happening inside the um, expansion fan. Okay. So, uh, let us see if we have any relationship for the velocity uh, within the expansion fan. Okay. So, if we go and look at it, okay. if you go and look at this, we just uh, wrote out the equation some time back. So, what we had was, okay, what we had was, Okay. So, this is the velocity uh, relationship okay. and um, this is essentially x. Okay. So, over x, uh, what is the relationship of the uh, velocity? So, you can see it is a linear relationship. If you can see from that, from this particular equation that the velocity uh, here rest everything is constant, the velocity and x is a linear relationship. right? So, therefore, within this region, so, uh, okay. so within this region, okay. so essentially what you can say, what basically we are saying is that um, we have the, uh, you know, a velocity which is u 3. Okay 
th and then that linearly decreases to uh, a 2 to 0 right as the expansion fan moves into the quiescent region okay so that is uh, the uh, velocity so then let us now next look at say the density okay now let us then look at say density again this is all x okay so let us say this is say density okay now uh, rho 4 okay th there is some density here so say this is rho 4 okay and uh, rho 3 okay now rho 3 rho 4 by rho 3 so in here um, i think we will have to kind of um, do 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 the numbers calculate something by numbers and then you will see uh, like we had seen for the shock wave as to whether the pressure decreases or increases. In this case, I can say that the uh, fluid here is moving in here, right? The fluid moving is moving to its right. So, u3, the velocity of that is this way, okay? And um, therefore, we did see minus characteristics, right? So, the wave is actually, so this is the movement uh, here, this is here, but the particles within the wave are moving opposite to it. And hence, we had uh, within the wave, sorry, within the disturbance is moving away from the wave. So, therefore, we had uh, C minus characteristics. So, that is the reason why we will have, okay, now the density will decrease in here, okay. So, um, density is say rho 3, okay. So, rho 3, this is rho 3, okay. And if you come here to this uh, this expression over here, so this is the relationship uh, of this is the relationship of the densities, and you can replace this by the x relationship with x by t here. Okay. So what we get is. which is a nonlinear variation of the density within the wave okay so uh, so yeah okay so we can i think write that any any point within so this is u this is rho okay so again if i similarly if i draw again x and let's say this is the temperature okay so similarly now you know this is this will kind of follow i guess this is t4 okay and then we have t3 and again this is a nonlinear relationship okay so you can sort of see from there and again <clears throat> finally the pressure okay so then we have pressure right so p4 okay we have p3 okay of course this is equal to p2 that's all uh, we know okay and again in here we have a nonlinear relationship okay so therefore this is p okay so therefore what uh, we can see so these are essentially uh, if you look at uh, this relationship, so this relationship uh, say, say if I call mm, 1, okay. So, let us say I call this as, uh, you know, so something, okay. So, you know, the velocity basically, velocity, we plotted this using this relationship and these are rho t and p with 2, 3 and 4 using equations 2, 3 and 4, we were able to kind of figure out the <coughs> nature of the uh, changes within the expansion fan and, uh, you know, behind and aft of it. So, essentially what we have uh, done so far is that we have uh, been able to calculate the change of properties in the entire shock tube. 
okay. And uh, we have derived expressions uh, using uh, using method of characteristics in this particular case. So, method of characteristics um, is something that we will do now in a little detail and apply it for um, some more uh, different you know problems and we will see how that works. So, in this case what we just to sort of uh, you know uh, summarize this okay in this case what we therefore uh, saw was that this expansion fan is uh, it, it basically results in um, straight line characteristics okay moving left okay uh, which was negative essentially because my fluid okay uh, the disturbance here is moving away or in the opposite direction to the to the you know fluid here the sh when the shock sh when the diaphragm is broken and the shock starts moving to its right in this particular case into the quiescent region it sets the sets this this fluid which is behind it into motion as well it induces velocity there so this starts moving to the right however an expansion fan therefore travels to the left the disturbance right so therefore the particles within the expansion fan Okay, they are moving to the left, while the fluid, the, the fluid in totality is moving to the right. Okay, so and you and that is uh, that is something that you can see um, in re represented in the properties. Okay, as the velocity decreases, okay, the, the is an isentropic process. It's an isentropic process. So as the velocity decreases, velocity decreases linearly within the expansion fan and then the uh, density density temperature and pressure all increase as in, uh, in, in a nonlinear manner okay nonlinear manner it's an isentropic process and therefore uh, and you know reach the constant values in this quiescent uh, region and we found out that the characteristics for these are straight lines which is and this is centered because they originate at the same point and move into the quiescent region. So, it is a, it's a simple wave. Okay? Now, we will see different applications of these characteristics, like I said, okay? when we you know, continue the next couple of lectures. And also, what we saw here um, for the shock wave is that this is an unsteady, uh, unsteady uh, motion. Right? And the way we were we uh, solve for properties in this particular case is basically change the reference frame, okay? To um, uh, to uh, change the reference frame so as to do some so, so as to get a picture which we were familiar with earlier, which was the steady case, okay? And for that, all we did was superimpose these two regions in here uh, with a velocity which is exactly. Uh, the same in magnitude, but opposite in direction to this, uh, the velocity of the shock wave. And that, with that, we were able to calculate properties behind and uh, in front of it. Okay? And uh, what we have seen here, of course, is that unlike in the steady case, unlike in the steady case, where the incoming Mach number governs the nature of properties behind and after the shock, in here, that is governed by the pressure ratios across the uh, uh, shock wave and uh, so similarly so for a given for a given uh, uh, diaphragm pressure right so initially when we have the diaphragm we have a pressure we have just this region 4 and 1 you know all of this is not happening at the time so then we have a pressure say p4 and p1 now if for th for a given pressure there is a given um, there is a given uh, shock strength Okay, so uh, shock strength, and using that, we can therefore calculate these uh, uh, the properties across it. Okay, so all right, I think that's all about the uh, shock tube. What we should go further with um, is some more applications of the method of characteristics. Okay, thank you.